Get more from TLDR and vote in our official poll on unlocking by following us on Twitter. It's at TLDR News UK, or as always, it's linked down below. And you can also follow me if you want to. So as everyone in England will know, today is what many have dubbed Freedom Day, the day where COVID restrictions are being lifted in England. However, with cases rising, international condemnation, the health secretary catching COVID and Johnson having to self-isolate, well, many are asking whether now is really the right time to unlock. So in this video, we'll run through what's changing today, whether it's the right call to unlock, and stick with us to the end because we have some pretty stunning polling about what the British public want to happen next. So first things first, what's actually changing today? Well, buckle in because boy do I have a list for you. All limits on the number of people who can meet are being dropped, including at weddings, funerals, concerts, theatres and sporting venues. The one metre social distancing rules are also being dropped. Face coverings are no longer mandatory, although it is still recommended and some shops and transport agencies will continue to require them. Nightclubs will be allowed to reopen, and pubs and restaurants will no longer have to exclusively offer table service. Guidance not to travel to amberless countries will end, and vaccinated adults who visit these amber countries will no longer have to self-isolate upon return. Then, from the 16th of August, more restrictions will be dropped, including the end of bubbles and most other restrictions in schools, and fully vaccinated adults no longer needing to self-isolate after coming into contact with someone who tests positive. Some things will remain though, with people still being encouraged to meet outdoors rather than indoors, clubs and other venues being advised to use the NHS COVID pass to ensure that patrons are vaccinated, although not being required to do so, and people being told only to return to workplaces slowly and when it's possible to do safely. Are these changes coming too soon though? Well, that feels pretty subjective, but fortunately, back in the spring, the government set their own targets as to when unlocking should happen, certain criteria that had to be met. Firstly, there had to be a successful vaccine rollout. Secondly, there needed to be evidence that vaccines were successful at limiting the virus. Thirdly, it had to be ensured that infection rates weren't putting an unsustainable pressure on the NHS. And finally, that the assessment of the risks is not fundamentally changed by new variants of concern. The first two are pretty easily passed, with the vaccine rollout going well thus far. The third seemingly passes too, at least for now, because although cases are rocketing and at the highest level they've been at for months, hospitalizations remain low although there are signs that that may be rising too. The fourth test though, well, that one's the hardest. Because what if I told you there was a variant out there which was more transmissible and also more deadly to all age groups? Well, there is. It's the Delta variant, and 99% of all COVID cases in the UK are Delta cases. While Delta continues to be a new and minor variant for most countries around the world, the UK has become dominated by this more dangerous strain. So I suppose by this criteria, it's not a new variant of concern in the UK, but only because it's got so out of hand here already, something that even former advisor Dominic Cummings mocked the government for last week. It's in part because of this that many international experts have condemned the UK's decision to continue with unlocking. 1,200 scientists signed a letter to the Lancet Journal warning that the UK's unlocking strategy could allow vaccine-resistant variants to develop, endangering the global COVID response and labelling it a dangerous and unethical experiment. The governments of Israel, New Zealand and Italy have helped lead this charge, with a member of the New Zealand COVID response team commenting that in New Zealand we've always looked to the UK for leadership when it comes to scientific expertise, which is why it's so remarkable that it's not following even basic public health principles. A director at UCL also emphasised the impact that Britain could have, remarking that because of our position as a global travel hub, any variant that becomes dominant in the UK will likely spread to the rest of the globe. The UK policy doesn't just affect us, it affects everybody, and everybody has a stake in what we do. Irrespective, clearly Delta is no longer a new variant of concern in the UK, and thus not suddenly going to change the maths when it comes to unlocking. So it seems that at least for now, these criteria have been met. So if that's what the government's criteria has to say, does the general public agree? Well, let's take a look at some stunning polling conducted by The Economist and Ipsos Mori. 
Towards the start of the month, they asked Brits when they wanted certain restrictions to be lifted, with the options being today, July 19th, a month's time, once COVID is under control globally, or have them permanently instated irrespective of COVID. When it comes to mask mandates, 70% of respondents want mask wearing in shops and public transport to be extended by a month, 63% until COVID is under control globally, and 40% forever, irrespective of COVID. The numbers are pretty similar for quarantining after international travel, with 35% supporting that being in place forever. Even more want to see foreign travel limited to just those with vaccinations, with 67% supporting the extension until the end of COVID and 46% forever. The most surprising, though, relates to nightclub and casino closure and 10pm curfews, with support for both to be implemented permanently at 26 and 19% respectively, and until the end of COVID at 43 and 27%. Do you agree with this polling, though? Head over to our Twitter account to cast your vote right now. It's at TLDR News UK. And while you're there, make sure to drop us a follow. As always, you should also subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.